Hey folks, it's Nick Granville. Welcome to Guitar Daily. So quickly approaching 100 episodes, I will be doing for for the 100th episode, I'll be doing a live stream. So be sure to tune in with that if you have any questions, things you want me to play. Um, but for today, I thought I'd talk about rhythm changes. Now, rhythm changes was something that kicked my butt when I first started learning this stuff. I don't know what it is about it, and it seems to be a guitar player thing that a lot of us struggle with it. Um, still today, it's like there's things that I'm, I'm working on to do with rhythm changes. So I thought I'd discuss some of that today. Um, I remember seeing the great John Abercrombie talking about it. It's like rhythm changes are his nemesis, he said. And so I thought, well, okay, I didn't feel so bad about the fact that I sucked at them. <laughs> and that there was lots to work on. So what is rhythm changes? So it's based on the tune, I Got Rhythm. But instead of having that little tag ending thing, they just cut it off and they made like a generic kind of chord progression. And that became rhythm changes or rhythm chord changes kind of like the blues you know you can sort of distill the blues down to a 12 bar it's not really that and so many blues have lots of different chord progressions but you would say a 12 bar blues is a certain thing or well, rhythm changes is the same kind of structure um, and that it's now got its own kind of structure to what it is um, different chord changes in the blues obviously but 
as its own formula. So the first thing I'd say is you need to work out is what you consider a rhythm changes, right? So everybody has different kind of approaches to how this works. But for me, it's like the, the basis of it is essentially one, six, two, five, and then very simply, same again. And then one, three in the bass, four, passing chord, five, and back to one. We do that twice, because it's an A-A-B-A -A form. And then the bridge, D7, which is up a third. Right, and two bars on that. Then it moves up a fourth to G. Two bars on that. Move up a fourth, two bars on C, and two bars on F. And then the last A, which is the same as the first, right? So that's kind of in my mind how I'm looking at it. Now, it's far more complex than that. My preferred changes, like that's like my basis that I use for it, but my preferred changes really are one, six, two, five, and then instead of going back to one, I, I use, typically think three, six, two, five, right? And then instead of this one, three in the bass, four thing, I prefer to think two, five, one into the four chord, and then that passing chord, five chord back, right? Everything else is the same. So once you've got a sequence in mind for how you think rhythm changes go, now you've got something you can work on, right? And so for me, I think one of the key things to to doing that is to, to right, you've got a sequence and then start doing some change running, all these things. I've talked about these in previous um, episodes of Guitar Daily. If, you, if you're not sure, go back and check them out. Um, but change running would be a good idea. Um, arpeggios, anything like that that you can do. Um, as Americans say, arpeggios, however you want to say it. Um, all that kind of stuff, like the... the, the uh, the groundwork, if you will, has to be done. So approaches, conceptual pro approaches. First thing I would say is like you can't go wrong with playing melodies. You probably heard me a bunch of times playing things like these very melodic kind of ideas like I'm trying to in my head what I'm thinking is how do I sing this part I don't make something that's singable right so I would start there right as, as trying to find some melodies that work because that's always going to work doesn't matter the situation if you play good melodies you have good music period second thing I'd work on is like one six two chord five chord progressions um so B flat G7 C minor F that pops up a lot in the sequence of I got rhythm so I would be working on that one you know having a bunch of licks that you know that work right that sort of stuff that I know is just gonna work I can slot them in and I can play kind of like if you're playing in the blues you might go you have those licks that are like your your um your vocabulary that you build on. So have a bunch of one, six, two, five licks and you'll be in good stead to play over this, right? Um, now, when we get to the, the bridge section, we have these chords here, right? Really each chord has to be treated on its own. Right? You know, a mixolydian would be a good starting place on each chord, but you also could do lydian dominant. You could also treat them like five chords, because essentially D to G is a five chord. Right, I've done a um, lesson already on superlocrian, so you could try superlocrian over that. You could also substitute chords, you probably would have heard us doing a bunch of that. And it's funny, I hear people playing these things as rhythm guitar, but I, and then they go and they solo and they just don't play any of it. And it's like they play, but they, you know, when they're comping them, I go. <laughs> and they'll play these things when they comp, but then, then they go and solo. None of that happens. So all the things that you can do for comping, I do for soloing as well, right? The first section now, it's really essentially B flat major, but I don't like that approach, personally. To me, it's like that second chord is one of the key things I want to hear people hitting. So second chord is a G7. Could think of it as G minor, I think of it as G7. Right, and G7 has a big fat B in it. It's one of the key notes. Like I want to... I 
want to hear people hitting hitting that B set B note. That to me is one of the big ones. Like if I hear that, I go, ah, that person's really studied rhythm changes. If I don't hear that, I kind of go, okay, they're just coasting on B flat, and that can be fine too. But you know, anyway, bridge section. There's something I got from Jim Hall, great jazz guitar player. Jim Hall, one of my favorites. So Jim Hall does this thing, um, the Sonny Rollins thing, that was sort of like a rhythm changes. Um, uh, it's one of those jazz casual type videos that I saw him play and I transcribed what he played. Um, not that I've done a huge amount of transcribing, but I'll talk about that in a future video. Um, he, on the D7 chord, he played this whole tone thing. So essentially if you go D and F sharp, and then just find all your symmetrical whole tone stuff around it. Next one came down, he did played the exact same thing but down a step. And then. All right, so essentially it's D whole tone and then to D flat whole tone, C whole tone, B whole whole tone back to the B flat. So it's a pretty cool sequence. So I played that. You probably would have heard that in a solo in the beginning. Um, one thing that I think is often forgotten about in rhythm changes is just playing the blues over it. And that sounds, to me, sounds really cool. Like, you know, you can have these chord changes going by and play. Right? And that becomes like a tension sound, right? And the blues, I, I, the way I see the blues when you put it into any kind of jazz context is becomes a statement. And to me, it's like that statement goes, right, here here it is. Um, and it's sort of a nod to the roots of this music, because this music came from the blues, right? So to me, it's like as soon as I hear a reference to the blues, I go, ah, all's right in the world. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, it's another way of playing tension, because it's not really the blues at all. In fact, it's B-flat major. So playing B-flat, like, seven stuff over it, and that's tension, isn't it? And that, that's how I treat it as such. Um, and the other thing I like to do is just apply other chord changes. So instead of... I'll go that Coltrane thing from Lady Bird and what have you, you know. You know, and put in those movements. You would have heard that in that solo earlier. I might have I might have done those kinds of things. Um, Um, I really like doing that. Um, if you've checked out Ben Yunsen, you'll hear that he does a lot of those sort of things too, and I really dig that. So, sort of substituting chord changes, especially over the 1, 6, 2, 5, or, right, you can substitute that in any way you can imagine, right, and then does it again. But this bit, right, it could be, it could be, Whatever subs you know, use them. And again, they become tension things. Um, I think that, that that's a good one to use in rhythm changes. And the last one that, I, that I'll talk about today is sustaining notes. Now, I didn't particularly sustain a lot in that solo at the beginning. And I think this is one of the reasons that a lot of guitar players really struggle with rhythm changes, myself included. Um, if you check out, like um, I was talking about John Abercrombie earlier, there's that video he did with the Hudson Project with Bob Mincer. Bob Mincer's burning on that opening rhythm changes that they do. And then he, it, Bob Mincer plays this thing where he just kind of sustains a note. And you go, yeah, I wish we could do that on guitar. Because, you know, we hit the note and it's kind of going to do this and tail off. Whereas one players can kind of sustain notes through a lot better than we can. So I think what happens is guitar players end up playing a lot more notes. And I think that's why rhythm, one of the things that makes rhythm changes pretty challenging for us is we have to play a lot more notes because we can't sustain stuff through and what have you. Um, so I'm always aware of that, and I try and think about leaving gaps if I can. Um, you know, it's one of those things that guitar is, you know, an instrument doesn't necessarily need to leave space, but we should. So I think about that, and I think, you know, where can I sustain, where can I leave space, what can I do to sort of make my ideas have a better framework, better phrasing, if you will. Um, anyway, I hope this has been useful. That's sort of a crash course on rhythm changes. Um, it's a big topic. This is something I could do 10 lessons on easy, but I thought I'll give you the, sort of the, the stuff that I do pretty regularly. Hopefully it's of use to you. Um, it's Sunday morning here, so forgive sloppy playing. <laughs> Had a late night gig last night. Didn't get back till kind of late, and I'm feeling pretty shattered today. But off to another gig, Wanganui Jazz Club today. So we'll be playing some jazz stuff later on this evening um, after a long drive. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Cheers.